we should state that you did win a cup race for Colleague, Colleague's first Spire. Or Spire. for Spire, I'm sorry. Yeah. You won that race for uh, for Spire. I want to ask you a question about that. Okay, yeah. I remember watching your face standing in that room. Yeah. Right. Uh, before they called it. And uh, what was your emotion? Like, what were you thinking? I have no idea. I mean, I, I wish I could give you an answer, but you know. Yeah. Like, it's a tough – it's a tough spot. You had, I know. I could see it on your face. You were like, I really want to be happy about this. Yeah. Um, but it's, but it's kind of weird. You know, it's going to be one of those asterisks. Uh, yeah. Has, um, has that, well, go ahead. I don't want to. Well, no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still, still chasing it. Right. You know, still chasing a win. You feel like you haven't won your first race yet. Yeah. yeah you until, still feel and, that way, don't until you? Until you get out in front of the crowd. Whole deal, Do the so. whole thing. Um, I mean, yeah, it's obviously special, and I'll live my, the rest of my life. You know, if I don't get one, is at least I'll have one. But, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good opportunity. Where's the trophy? Just upstairs. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool because I think it helps people understand that you still feel like you, you're chasing that first win. That's, yeah. a, that's good for people to know uh, because they will want to get behind that. Yeah. They will want to support, you know, cheering for you and seeing you finally be able to get to experience that so um <clears throat> i could see that look on your face when they were getting ready to call that race and you're like i really don't know how to feel about this right and do you go celebrate yeah, uh, you know yeah, what, what yeah, do you do yeah, yeah we didn't so, burn down big house no, that night. <laughs> no, i went home and yeah. skipped some rocks across the pond and went to bed you know <laughs> yeah right so um the that to get to mike's point um you've you know you you're everybody Everybody on the outside looking in, nobody knows the inner workings of the colleague program and your own career and all that. But from the outside looking in, you've got a great home. Y'all, uh, you're, you're loved and appreciated at colleague as one of their, one of their first sort of diamonds in the rough, right? Their, their first projects that they've sort of cultivated into a cup driver. And, but you, you mid season announce that you're not coming back. And you're gonna, you know, go somewhere else. And then shortly after that, you announce you're going to Rick Ware. <clears throat> if you would have said you were going to Rick Ware two years ago, I would say, well, why in the hell would you go there? Yeah. Right. Knowing what I know about Rick Ware and what they've done just this year, uh, I think I know. But tell me. So, when did the conversation? When did you start to realize that you needed to start looking for another opportunity somewhere else? Well, I mean, honestly, I, you know, I feel like me and colleague were close. Yeah. Um, and I went to my people and uh, just wanted to change. Just mm. needed to uh, needed to go somewhere new and, uh, you know, just bet on myself. And, and uh, you know, I felt like I kind of leveled off at colleague and, and wasn't growing as a person needed to go somewhere that um you know appreciated me and, and really wanted me to to build their program and um yeah so when i sat down with my people and and um you know we're kind of looking at all of the options you know we were in talks with colleague and and i feel like we had a pretty good deal done and um then rick kind of at the last minute um you know started calling and, and wanting me to drive his race cars and and something about it just like kept me awake you know and and i had no idea why right because you know from the outside it's it's rick ware i mean it's it's uh you know they haven't been that successful in the past so um you know rick just kept calling my people and, and calling and, and my people were like hey like you know rick rick's really interested and in, um you know this and that and i'm like well just let, let me go meet rick let me see what he's got going on All you right. know so where did you meet him at so that's the funny part of the story. So, um, you know, my people send me RFK's address. And I'm like, RFK? RFK? Like, what does RFK have to do with anything? I thought yeah. I was going to Rick's. And I kid you not, showed up, and he said, meet me at the RFK count fountain right there. Walked up to the fountain, and Robbie Benton was standing there. And uh, he took me inside, and I'm blown away how beautiful Rick's shop is. Um, and that's really what sold me. It's... Uh, it's right there. If you've ever been to RFK, there's a museum on the one side and there's old storage on the other side. Um, and they took that old storage and turned it into RWR and uh, sat down and kind of walked around the shop and, and um, 
Rick and Robbie told me their plan, right? And um, what's the plan? If, what can you tell us about the plan? Well, they sh- they're racers and they want to grow and and um, you know they needed a solid driver to to really grow around to get get people to to work there and um, to build their program and um, little did I know Rick had pitched me to Brad because everything that Rick does Brad and RFK have to approve since they're on campus there. Oh, interesting. So that they're that much ingrained with RFK that yep. Brad is Brad making... and Brad and RFK. I mean, it's not. You know, I want to be clear. Rick found me, and, and Rick sure. Rick pitched me to Brad. But Brad and RFK have final decision, and crew chiefs, people, um, everything. So mm. I go down, and we start discussing stuff in in the boardroom, and Brad Kislowski walks in. I, I mean, I had no idea I was even going to RFK this morning. You know, Brad Kislowski walks in and tells me the deal, and tells me you know everything I wanted to hear, and that uh, you know that they wanted me to drive for him. And uh, we shook hands right there, and and I was sold. And um, yeah, Rick and Robbie have been awesome to me. So then, uh, you know, we set an announcement date, and Rick kept wanting to announce. And I'm like, man, like it was it was important for me to control how this announcement went out because I couldn't let word get out that I was going to RWR before I announced it. Right. And the reason why is that I had to control my own destiny. If I started if if it was let out that I was going to Rick's at the time, people would have said, "Oh, like you know, he's getting getting fired from college, and and Rick Rick's gonna hire him. Rick's where the only place he can go." Yeah, you wanted to control the narrative. I wanted to control you. the narrative, yeah. and that was important. I told Robbie and Rick and Brad, I said, "Hey, we got to keep this under wraps. I want to control the narrative. I want to be the one that says I'm going to Rick Ware." You know, yeah. I'm leaving college and going to Rick Ware, and it was important for me, and that's why it was a big shock. You didn't hear any rumors about it. We kept it so under yeah, wraps. You did. So, uh, you know, Matt and Chris had no idea. Um, I called them right before the announcement. They didn't answer, unfortunately, <laughs> and I we had to announce. Yeah. And um, so I called them at, like, 1130. Afterwards? No. So they right didn't before, answer. Right before. And, and then didn't. we had to announce, and the announcement was already out, and I called Matt, and... Um, you know, he understood and, and uh, called Chris and he understood too. So, yeah, it was important for me to control the narrative because I want to go to Rick Ware. I, you know, I, I want I want to be there. They trust me um, with the relationship with RFK. I think, you know, might not be the first five, ten races that, you know, we're, you know, setting the world on fire. But uh, it's a long-term deal and, and um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be proud of what we do over there. You know, I'm, I'm going to grow internally as myself i've been with chevrolet for my whole career i've been with colleague for five years and and i think me as a person this is gonna help me grow and and and, um i think it's the right opportunity for me yeah i feel that man i really believe it experience the thrill of the racetrack like you're in the driver's seat with DraftKings sportsbook bet on your favorite racers and feel the rush of every pass pit stop and victory like never before Right now, new customers can turn five bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. Bet five on anything to score big, no matter what goes down on the racetrack. Check out Dirty Modo every Thursday where they will handicap the field and they'll recommend bets to watch for the upcoming race. With props, parlays, and more, you'll have bets to follow all race long. The racing action doesn't stop Till the checkered flag drops. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and join with code DJD. New customers can bet $5 and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. That's code DJD only on DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Like I said, if you'd made this switch a couple years ago, it would have really been hard, you know, confusing, but... Yeah. <clears throat> This year, we've seen big gains from the back half of the field. Yeah. Rick Ware's team has gotten better. Uh, just this past weekend, you know, Newman shows up at Bristol in one of his handful yeah. of races and outqualifies eight or so cars. They would not be doing that a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, the next-gen cars helped a lot in terms of leveling the playing field and creating opportunity um, and how those parts and pieces are controlled and, un- and unable to manipulate them. Uh, the bigger organizations can't create advantages like they used to. And so it's got, it's given like Rick Ware and teams like that true opportunity 
right? Yeah. If they do the right things and put the right investments in the right places, they have just much of a chance to grow and improve. Front Row Motorsports is a great example yeah. of one of those teams that is now, it's normal yeah. to see McDowell run in the top 10. We used to go, damn, he's overachieving yeah. tonight. Yeah, you know, I think the big thing is, is you know, there's there's two halves to the garage. There's the key partners that yeah. get all the manufacturer support. Yes. Then there's the others. And if you can't get with a key partner team, which, frankly, I, I don't think I could have. It's hard. Mm. Um, they're, they're all kind of the same. Yeah. They're all, whoever you have working on them is the difference. All the parts and pieces are the same. Everything is the same. It's just who do you have to work on it. So if we can go to Rick's, have a bunch of good people work on them, a bunch of smart people, have a good relationship with RFK, have the same parts and pieces, I mean, we're, it's not like, you know, I'm getting any more manufacturer support. So if you can't get with a key partner team, they're all lateral moves. Mm. It's just the people that make the difference. And for me, you know, it's just who do you want to wake up for and, and you know, work for? Yeah. And uh, Rick Ware, he's there every day. You needed – this is motivated in you. Yeah, 1,000%. Right. Um, Rick Rick's there every day. I mean, he has a wide motorsports. I mean, you turn on TV. Yeah. Um, and – I, there's a Rick Ware car on track. I mean, it just happens. Indy car. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. he's got all kinds Insta. of teams. I mean, yeah. all kinds of teams. And he just loves it. And he just wants to race and win. And, yeah, I, I want to be the guy that delivers Rick, you know, what, what he wants. Yeah. Their improvement this year has been pretty impressive, pretty remarkable. There's been a couple handful of races where, you know, a, uh, JJ and yeah. even Newman's Newman had real good speed at Darlington. We were watching yeah. his lap times, and it was really he was you know there's these moments, Mike, if you're standing there where you're uber focused on the on the laps and watching every car on the racetrack, you can see where they're making gains. Um, if you're just looking at results, you won't really right. recognize the growth. But um, the connection, Brad told me about the connection with with uh, his program many months ago and um the you might be catching a ride on this lightning bolt at the right time because it just so happens that um roush fenway keselowski racing is also on this sort of you know meteoric rise in and uh in performance which to brad's uh credit will then gain more manufacturer support you know that big funnel that ford has maybe yep. gets situated a little bit more over the top of the roush camp more so than in the past so the, all of that information and support trickles down um so timing wise man this yep. looks really great yeah i mean obviously rfk has you know their own relationship with ford and and with respect they can't share everything that that they have and they're given but um, you know, I think what, what information we do get is going to be far, you know, way more than enough. And, and, um, you know, the, the day I walked into, to Rick's place, the announcement day and, and, um, you know, everyone at RWR was sitting there. I, I mean, they were just excited yeah. for me to drive their race car. And that's a, that's a big part of it. As far as I know, this is kind of like their first big hire, turn, like their first real true investment in a yeah. driver, right? I know JJ's been working with them for a long time. Yeah. Um, and he's had this really unique journeyman's type type of career. Oh, yeah. But uh, this is kind of like their you're you're their long term future, right? And JJ's sort of on the back end of his his career. Um, but the um, when do you think you get a chance to get behind the wheel of one of their race cars? I'm certain that you're probably looking out forward, like, all right, man, it's next February or it's whenever, right? When yeah, you... I mean, probably. And, I mean, unless there's testing over right. the off season, um, which, I mean, NASCAR kind of picks and chooses. Right. Chooses you got to be teams. excited about that, though, right? Oh, yeah. Every, I mean. Even though it is all, like you said, yeah. it's all the same parts and pieces, but you know who works on them makes, yeah. it, makes a difference. So yeah, you know, it is. Do you know who's going to be working on your car? I don't. No, maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Um, I think you, you do. you're going to have some input. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, that's why that's what I like about it. I mean, we can go over there and and shape it to how we want it. Yeah. Um, and he already has a bunch of great people working there, and and like I said, those people are excited for me to come, and if I can come in and and um, kind of do my own deal and and bring what I've learned at colleague and and um, you know, put that into there and. I, I, I just feel like I trust these cars and know what these cars need, and I feel like over the past two years, 
I've kind of developed a, a good relationship with the car. So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's still the car. And, and the first race is the Coliseum, which I sat on the pole, you know, in, in the right. car this year. So, That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Like I said, yeah. it, it might might take a second for us to start running. But, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm really excited about this. And it, it was something that, you know, I, I really wanted to go do. And, and I just needed to make a change. And, and um, you know, Rick was kind of so far in left field that it was attractive to me. That's cool. It I like amazing. that. Yeah. Um, well, I think a lot of people are going to be excited to see how that program, you know, responds and what a difference you make in it. And I think people will definitely be patient, uh, as you've mentioned, uh, with, with you know, how your season goes next year. Um, but, you know, Brad, like Brad, he went over to Roush, and I'm thinking, why is he doing this? It's, so, it's kind of similar, albeit – different but it's very similar in a way like i'm like man what does he want to leave penske for to do this and how long will it be before we even see the program start to improve and it it happened way faster than i think anyone uh could imagine um you definitely make them better and they are now this year showing that they want to be better um, so again, all this coming together, uh, is pretty, yeah. pretty interesting. And that was, that was big for me too. Yeah. You know, like you, you walk by Rick's pits and, and he's got brand new C-Tech garage boxes. I know and it. I mean, they're, they're putting a lot of money into it and in appearance, you know, everyone's in, in nice stuff that, you know, the back half of the cup field, it's not like it used to be, nope. you know, it's, it's very, um, tidy and neat now. So, um, yeah, appearance was big for me and Robbie Benton's been super professional. He, he came from Penske and. He's been awesome so far. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. I yeah. mean, I, I can't wait to go over there and, and start. Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast, the Dale Jr. Download. It's available on all major podcast platforms.